Poor George. He was going to take me over by the stasis. But I guess he's just too tired. He didn't even get to church this morning. So hard he worked. Yeah, he must be tired when he passed up a chance to gab with that old fogey Otto Stetzel. Please, Arnold. You shouldn't talk ugly birds at your papa's best friend. Best friend? Well, he's his worst enemy, if you ask me. Arnold, what are you saying? Well, look at him. Middle of a Sunday afternoon. Dairy farming's hard enough, goodness knows, but it could be a lot easier if he just get the things he needs. And wants. And every time I'm just about convinced him that we can afford it, and actually cut costs. You can depend on old man Stetzel to tear down his confidence again. Please, more respect you should show. Especially to your sweetheart's own father. Well, Georgine knows how I feel. Her dad's not such a bad guy, Mom. It's just... Well, Georgine agrees with me that he at least ought to get a few new things if he intends to go on farming. Yeah, but Arnold, maybe her papa is right. After all, he hasn't any son to leave the farm to when he retires. So why should he spend money on new equipment? There never was such a beautiful country like Switzerland. Well, I guess I must have been a pretty happy young man. Such a happy young man. But was I so? A healthy young man is really happy only if there's something big to try to get to. And over there, back of those clouds was something big. America. Real thrilling. <sighs> Things always move in America. Somehow you move along with them, whether you want to or not. Wasting your time, mister. My pop moves slowly. You'll have to sell harder than that. Who's that? Arnold? Why, you're not even born yet. I'm not even in America yet. You never will be. Not really, unless you change your way of thinking. But I did change, Arnold. I started changing when you was just a baby. A man had to or be left behind. Of course, the change didn't come easy, but it did come. Always it was the same. First, they wanted I should give up my horse. I was married now. Arnold was a baby, and I thought I couldn't afford a tractor. What was the matter with a horse? I liked my horse. I would be lonesome without a horse. But they said I could cut down my costs with a tractor. And you did. Yeah, I know, I know. I began to understand that you have to measure today against tomorrow. You think you can't afford new equipment. But when you stop to figure it out carefully, you sometimes discover you can't afford not to have it if you want to cut costs and have an easier life. And then it was a truck I must have, and an automobile, then a milking machine, and a manure spreader, and a ventilating fan for the milking barn. And all the time it was getting harder to get help. People could make too much money in the cities. Yet you went right ahead, getting more done than you ever got done before, when you had the help, even before I was big enough to lend much of a hand. Yeah, yeah, I know, Arnold, I know. We got 40 cows now. When Arnold has grown up, Lola has come along and is now tap team. And Arnold is always trying to get me to try new things. He even took me over to Joe DeMarco's place to see what it's like when you get the desire and the vision to have a modern electrified dairy farm. That Mr. DeMarco is a go-getter. He runs a big dairy operation in the city and he has a hundred cows on only four people to work on the whole farm, including Mr. DeMarco himself. He can unload 1,200 bales of hay a day with his electric elevator. He can put a whole load in the silo in less than 15 minutes. And with his silo unloaded, it takes only a few minutes a day to get the silage down for the cows. The barn cleaner keeps the troughs always clean and drops the manure right down into the manure spreader, ready for the fields. 
the best hotel doesn't have better ventilation as DeMarco's milking barn. And the place is so well lighted, a cow could read a newspaper any time of day or night. Oh, that was some place, let me tell you. After that, Arnold had a lot of things to say. And they made good sense, too. Naturally, we wouldn't try to get all these things at first, Pop. That would be crazy with our present income. But we have to start someplace. And that place is right here, with the barn. Look, Pops. We can't increase our herd because there's not enough room for them in the barn. Although we've got enough land to raise feed for them. So what do we do? We either build a new barn, or else enlarge and modernize the old one. But how do we pay for it? The new cows will do that. Look. In these areas, we're raising more grain than we need for our present herd and selling the surplus. We're also selling most of the heifers. If we had a bigger barn, we could keep the heifers and feed them the surplus grain instead of selling it. The earnings from these new cows would add up to more than we make from selling the grain and the heifers. In a short time, these extra earnings would pay for the new equipment as well as raise our level of profit. So you see, Pop, as our profit increases, we can add more equipment which would cut costs further. And all the time, we're making it possible to relax once in a while and have some fun. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. If Arnold ever gets tired of trying to sell me on new ideas, I know that before too long, I'll be getting the same sales talk from his little brother. It don't take them long to grow up. Hansi is only 11, but already he can do a man's work. A man's work, eh? Just what is a man's work around here? Let's look around. It costs us 230 man hours a year just to get the milk to the cooler. An automatic milking system would pipe it there right from the cow. Getting the silage out of the silo costs another 200 man hours a year. The silo and loader would do it in just about 15 minutes each day, only a quarter of the time. Feeding takes more than 365 hours a year. A conveyor feeder would get the job done in one-fourth that time. A man's work, huh? You said. Cleaning the barn alone takes all of us an hour every day, or nearly 1,100 man and boy hours a year. A barn cleaner would reduce this time to a small fraction. No wonder our buildings and our expensive farm machinery are in such bad shape. There simply isn't enough time between milkings to get everything done. A man's work, huh? Huh, a giant's. My Arnold has such enthusiasms. He says that the bank would give us a 15-year loan that would cost us only $70 a month. And he says it would take only about $10 worth of electricity a month to run the new equipment. That's $80, and I guess you couldn't get even one good hired hand for so little money. But I don't know. It's natural for a young man to have a lot of confidence. But when you're the head of a family, you get more cautious. And I don't forget that Arnold is a healthy young man looking for something big to try to get to, like I was once. Uh, I suppose it won't be long before Hansi is thinking about big things, too. He's a good boy and a hard worker. But Hansi is sometimes lazy. He likes to sneak off to the hay, take a snooze when he gets tired. Arnold says Hansi wouldn't get so tired if he had more equipment. But that's just some more of Arnold's sales talk. <laughs> he even wants me to get a crop dryer for the hay. But we got to go slow on such investments. We can't afford everything. One thing I think is silly. Arnold is always afraid that damp crops will cause spontaneous combustion in the hay. <laughs> spontaneous combustion.
Petra. What? We're going to get the new thing. Oh, wonderful. Here are the plans. I had them all figured out long before he ever made up his mind. Now, here we're going to have the new barn, twice as big as the old one. We'll have a lot more milking stock, of course. And in it, we're going to have better lighting, an automatic milking system, a barn cleaner, better ventilation, all things we talked about. And the mow, we're going to install a hay curing system. Pops wants to do that first thing for some reason. Here we're going to have the new silo and silo unloader. We're going to rebuild this shed. Uh, this tool shop will be repaired. Uh, we can save a lot by doing most of the work ourselves. Oh, sure. Now, the new power system will come in right through here. I know the bank will stake us because of what it'll mean in cutting production costs. I talked to him about it months ago. What are you doing next weekend? Next weekend? Yeah, county fair opens, remember? Oh, of course. And this year, they're going to demonstrate a new pole-tight pen stable barn. A calfateria, they call oh, it. No. With trick feeder and pipeline milker. Pop and I are going up to see it. Want to come along? It's going to be a lot of new things this year. Oh, may I, Dee? That'd be wonderful, Arnold. He ain't going. But, Dad... Now, don't give me any arguments, Georgine. I've got enough trouble with you already without you going gallivanting around and seeing a lot of silly things that'll give you new ideas. But, Dad, I only want to... You only want to look at a lot of new bangled equipment they say you need on a modern dairy farm so you can come back here and nag the life out of me to spend a lot of money which I haven't got. Sure, I'd like to have a lot of new things, too. Sure, they'd save money. They'd be fine, fine. But who's going to pay for them? You youngins are all alike. You go off to college and get a lot of fancy ideas, get to believe in your parents don't know anything about dairy farming, no matter how well we've tried to do by you. You never bother to think about where the money might be coming from. All we hear is, we've got to change this, we've got to change that. If we say we can't afford it, you threaten to leave the farm and go into town where you can make more money. Well, when you finish college, young lady, you just go into town and see how far you get. You'll probably end up as a waitress in a hash house. It was your mother's idea for you to go to college in the first place. And since she passed on, I ain't had a minute's peace. You even turned your Aunt Laura against me, my own sister, who tries to take care of this place, didn't you? Dad, don't you think you're being just a little... I ain't being nothing but truthful. And as if I didn't have enough trouble already with you, you have to go and get sweet of my best friend's boy, who's as full of loony ideas as you are. Dad! Oh, it's all right, Georgine. I'll see you Tuesday night at the Grange Hall. Then she ain't going there, neither. stable three-part barn, they're free to move about. In the loafing area, they can bed themselves down or just stand around and gossip. The feeder barn, they can get hay and water at any time. The milking parlor has all the comforts of home. Yes, sir, this is a one-man dairy operation with labor costs cut to the bone. Milking time, the electric silo unloader drops the silage onto a conveyor belt, which distributes it along the bunk. And the sound of the motor is a signal for the cows to come and get it. Yes, folks, a real cow material. In the milking parlor, a metering device measures the grain, which gravity brings down from overhead storage. A tug of a rope, and in go the cows, two at a time. And they take places, two on each side of a 30-inch deep pit, which allows for a normal working level, makes easier the job of checking, washing, and putting on the milkers. The operator moves the milkers from one side to the other washing and checking two cows while the other two are being milked. 
A glass pipeline carries the milk overhead to the milk room, where it's rapidly cooled to safe temperature in a bulk tank. And one man can do the whole job all by himself. Disobeying him was the end of the world. And Laura says he's acting like a child. And he certainly is. She says she'll bring him around, but it's been going on too long. More than two weeks now. And, and next week I go back to school and... Oh, Arnold, I'm getting to hate my own home. Honey, you mustn't say that. Your dad's a good man. He's just stubborn. Like his daughter, maybe. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Things all packed, honey? Let's see, you'll be a junior this year, won't you? Imagine that, Otto. Our little Georgina's certainly grown up in a hurry. Hasn't she? And next year she'll graduate, and I suppose it won't be long before she'll be leaving us, and... Gravy, Otto. you were home for Christmas. Once we'd finished the barn, the new equipment just seemed to fall into place like magic. all installed and working. We're planning a barn dance during the Easter holidays to show it off to our friends. It's going to be a sort of housewarming or <laughs> barn warming, and it ought to be real fun. Naturally, the main person I want to come is you. And of course, we've invited your dad and your Aunt Laura, but Aunt Laura says she doubts whether any of you will be there, since your father's so stubborn. What in the world are you doing home? Easter holidays haven't started yet. I came home to see Dad. Where is he? Why, in the barn, I guess. I... Aren't you even going to kiss me hello? Oh, of course. Treat anybody like that, Dad. And I'm not just anybody. 
I'm your own flesh and blood. I'm your daughter, Dad. Might have been better off if you'd been my son. So that's what's been eating you. You didn't want a daughter. You wanted another hired hand. I didn't mean that, Georgie. You wanted a boy. A boy who'd grow up with big muscles so he could do all the hard work you ought to have modern machinery doing around here. A girl's too soft. She's only good for cooking and sewing and going off and marrying somebody and having boys to work for other fathers. You wanted a boy that you could slap down when he talked back to you and tried to get you to fix up this rundown farm. You want a boy? Okay, I'll be a boy. I'll start right now. Where do you want me to start? You want me to throw down some solids from that rickety old silo, that beautiful keepsake from the Civil War? I can do that easy. Georgine, I only said... You only said you wanted a boy instead of a girl, and you're going to have a boy if I have to break my back and my neck. says your dad's not a real hero. He's just an old phony. Says there was enough silage in the bottom of that chute to have broken your fall without his being such a big, brave, strong man. Hmm. <laughs> he also says your dad's going to have to buy a new silo, along with a lot of other new equipment if he wants to keep on farming. Oh, now, let's don't start that again. In the first place, all the talk in the world wouldn't make him change his mind. Besides, I've decided if he likes his farm the way it is, that's his business. And I've resolved never, never to nag him about it again. Hey, you're being very rude, if I may say so. What are you reading there that's so interesting, anyway? Uh, 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 hey, where did you get this? Oh, I, uh, I got friends around here. Uh, you know, Georgie, we get just two things barn cleaner and a silo unloader, we can save enough time to handle eight or ten more cows a year. And then we can go on from there. Oh, Daddy, you old faker, you. One other thing, Georgie, even if I don't have a son to leave the farm to, it's just possible I, I might have a son in law. You think that might be arranged? <laughs> Arnold are not getting married. 
No, sir, absolutely not. Because, because for six whole days, they already been married. Ah, ha, 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 ha,